Okay, hi guys, I'm Irma, and so for this activity, I ended up with five points in total. And then what this exercise revealed about my own positionality is like, it gave me a, what's that? A privilege check, kind of, because even though I only had five points, which I'm sure there's people who either had more or less, but there's my privilege check. I'm pretty sure there's people who had less and some had zero. So that it kind of like reminded me like there's people out there who have it worse than you. So I always have to remind myself like when I'm complaining about something so little, there's someone out there who has it 10 times worse than I do. So it was just a reminder back in in the back of my mind to always remember that and not to be so was the bratty basically. Um, for the next one, are there particular statements which apply to your experiences that shape you as a learner? So yeah, um, the statements that did apply to me a lot were like the ones that mentioned if you were in any honors courses or growing up or like the GATE program or if you were able to take private SAT and ACT classes before college and then like if you grew up with internet or a computer all the time. Those ones kind of spoke to me just because growing up, I did struggle a lot in like middle school and a little bit in high school, but I got my act together by the end of high school, um, by my junior year because, so those kind of just spoke to me more because I started slacking off and I wouldn't work as hard and my mom wasn't able to like afford a private tutor for me to help me and like um make help make my grades better like I relied on like friends family my sisters pretty much so um so yeah it taught me to like work harder study more and not to take anything for granted because now because of that I do study really hard because I'm not smart I don't get the things like that like I have common sense but school stuff sometimes doesn't come easy to me so since I was able to study a lot and like I know how to study now like once you find your studying ways like you get it better so that's really helped me a lot while growing up so those statements did remind me a lot when I would grow up and school was kind of hard for me when I was younger um and then in what manner did this activity enable you to think more deeply about the bootstrap myth what does it have to do with privilege equality and culture so the bootstraps bootstraps myth was like lifting yourself up by using your own resources no help pretty much <clears throat> and then in my opinion all three of those pretty much tie in together for me just because like i mean like privilege i would take it as like to lift yourself up by that like my <clears throat> for my example for myself um, I grew up going to, I grew up in South Sac, but I grew up going to high schools, like, in better areas because my mom wanted us to get a better education. So how I used the bootstrap um, myth there was um, with, I didn't, I wasn't privileged like all those kids. Those kids had their license by 16, had a car by 16, had, were wearing, like, nice brands and all that. So I had to lift myself up and, like, this was more of, like, a mentality thing for me. Like, just remind myself, like, I gotta keep going, you know, I'm just there for an education. Like one day I'll be able to afford nice things. Like I have my struggles and I'm sure they have their issues too. So it was more of a mentality thing for me for the privileged one. And then equality and culture. I mean, I feel like those kind of tie in for both just because since I did go to like nicer schools where I was surrounded more like by the um, like white kids uh, rather than my, um, my culture, which is um, Hispanic. So that, yeah, that pretty, I think those two tie into there just because for the, using that, using the myth for that, mm, what do I say? I mean, it's kind of like what I said before is more of a mentality for me, like just constantly reminding myself, like, um, reminding myself that like, I just have to work hard, like I have to not h try harder to fit in, but just be who I am. Like, it doesn't matter because. I just have to be proud of who I am. I have to represent who I am. So I think that's kind of what the bootstrap myth for me was with those. Just kind of more mentality than actually physical things. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think, yeah. I think it has to do a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. And then for the next one. Uh, what insights you teach you? What insights you? Okay, so where it says, were there any like challenges or anything that aligns with this idea of the myth? So, 
I think there kind of was a challenge for me just because when I was hearing the TED talk, he pretty much was just talking about people who did have, who grew up like from nothing and then just became super duper successful like Oprah, Bill Clinton, I think he said, and a few other names. <clears throat> but I didn't want him just like, in my opinion, like I don't think in order to be successful, like I don't think that means like having all the money in the world and everything. Like to me being successful is like I graduated from college, I have a degree, I have a good job, steady income, 401k, good family, I'm happy. Like I think he should have kind of also said like, that as the bootstrap smith as well like tied in those examples rather than just talking about people who were super rich you know because at the end of the day, not all of us are going to be super duper rich like unfortunately i would love that excuse me i would love that but i think we have to be more practical sometimes so for me it was just that kind of contradicting but that's about it and oh thanks for listening